I'm Kevin Bowe from IPR. We're talking about miking a solo sax today. So we have uh, three microphones here today that are pretty commonly used in solo sax. We've got an inexpensive one, a mid-priced, and a more expensive one. Uh, a very common choice is going to be the 421, positioned really simply right above the horn, not necessarily buried right in the horn. You want to let it breathe a little bit, or at least I like to. This is a cheap microphone, but it gives a great mid-range kind of growly tone to a saxophone. If you want something a little sweeter and um, more polite maybe, and a little uh, darker, if maybe if you've got a saxophone that's too bright, you want to mellow it out, a ribbon mic is going to be a good choice. Uh, the Royer is on the brighter side of ribbon mics. Um, and then if you want a large diaphragm condenser for a brighter, more detailed sound, uh, then you might want to go with the TLM 49, uh, the Neumann here. And in each case, you're going to be maybe this far off of the micro, off of the bell of the of the horn, kind of aiming into it. Um, and you really can't go wrong with either of the three of these mics. But uh, probably the most commonly used one is going to be the 421. So now we're going to have Walter play into each of these mics with the same horn, and we can explore the sound differences in the control room to see what we've recorded. <laughs> Okay, so we have the same saxophone, same sax player, same room, same mic prees. The only thing that changed was the microphones. We we're running all three of them through, uh, each of them through an API, no compression, uh, no EQ, straight into Pro Tools. And here's the sound we got from the least expensive microphone, the 421. <laughs> Sounds nice, nice mid-range, but a, a nice cut on top too. It's probably the, uh, I think maybe the brightest of the of the three. Now here's the darker uh, Royer ribbon mic. Definitely more mid-range, less bright. Which of those two do you like better? The second one, the second sure. one, me too. And then the third one is the large diaphragm, somewhat darker for a for a big bright mic, uh, TLM forty nine. That one's right in the middle between the two, but also, do you hear it picking up more of the room? Yep. Yeah, I heard that. Which one do you think is your favorite of all three? It's a it's it's a sh it's a shootout between the second one and the third one. Yeah, between me. the Royer and the TLM 49. Yeah. There and you go. And it would depend and it would depend on what I was doing. Um, True. In a in a song exactly. or what kind of vibe I'm trying to carry in the song with the horn as it relates to the other instruments and so forth. True. Good point. So there you have it. Can't really go wrong with either of those three mics. Some of the char characteristics you want to think about when um, recording a horn saxophone especially is that you have tone holes and that you also have a bell and you have air and all these physical uh, properties that are going on uh, to capture uh, the true essence of the horn. This is why it's hard for synthesizers and things like that to impl uh, to you know, uh, copy or you know, uh, to sound or have a patch that's a sax sound because you don't have these real properties in place. When you're miking, you should definitely want to uh, think tone holes uh, on the horn because there is sound coming out of those holes when those notes are open. So you want to be able to capture that. Sometimes two mics can take care of that. Uh, even one mic can take care of that. Is where uh, Kevin was mentioning about the uh, the M49 that captured the room. So now you're catching catching more of the essence of the horn. <laughs> 